Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is Lord. We give God all the praise, honor, and glory for the privilege and the awesome opportunity that we have to share with you, the viewer and listener, a living word from God. And boy, oh boy, do I have a word for you today. Please make sure you grab a Bible. Grab a highlighter and a pad or something to take notes with. We're going to continue our teaching on the subject of the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. If you haven't yet watched or listened to the first six broadcasts, please do so. You can go to YouTube, just punch up Dr. Garen Gatling, the name of Jesus, tons of videos there, but specifically the last six videos and listen to them and study them and memorize them, meditate on them, think about them, be a doer of the word. We are living in a time where the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has to rise up in his mighty power, show forth his glory, declare his gospel, declare the kingdom of God. We're coming to a place where miracle signs and wonders will be in abundance and the mighty army of God, the body of Christ will march teaching and preaching and healing in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And God's end time army must be, somebody say must be, they must be well grounded in the word. God taught me that in the beginning of a 2000 and I believe 2019, right about when COVID-19 hit, he said, my end time army needs to be well grounded in the word. So, Let's get into the word of God and study about the name of Jesus, the authority in the name, the power in the name. How do we use that name to set men and women free, to break the power of the devil over the lives of those that are bound and shackled by the enemy? We're going to set them free and we do it by A, the proclamation of the gospel, B, by the power of the Holy Ghost, and C, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity that we have to feed upon your holy written word. We honor your word as it is indeed the word of God in truth. That word will effectually work in us as believers and we receive the engrafted word with meekness. We thank you that this word, this book is able to save our souls and make us whole. We receive your word to renew our minds. We receive your word as our medicine. We receive your word as our wisdom. And we welcome the Holy Spirit whom you have sent to be our teacher and to be our guide. We welcome him to live big in us today, to unveil and unfold and reveal the truth of your word to our reborn spirits, to illuminate our minds and yea, even to quicken our mortal bodies. I hear the Lord telling me as I pray, that you will receive your healing and your miracle as you listen and act upon this word. God is in the healing business and you can receive from him whatever it is you need. Healing for your body, deliverance from a habit, deliverance for a loved one, whatever that is, you can receive that as you receive God's word. And Father, I'm asking you to grant me utterance to speak this word boldly today, to make it manifest as I ought that I can speak as of the oracles of God, that you might be glorified in all things. Oh, Spirit of God, I lend you my tongue. Use it to glorify Jesus and save many. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with me, please, to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. We'll start there. Please make sure you have a Bible. I want you to see these things with your own eyes as you hear them with your own ears. Take the time to say them out of your mouth. Think about them. Get them down into your heart and then act upon them. That's when all the blessings and the benefits that Jesus purchased for you and me at Calvary become a reality in our lives. 
It's the doers of the word that are blessed indeed, according to the book of James. You have to be a doer of the word. That's when the blessings come. Not just to hear, oh, that was a good message. Oh, did you hear Dr. Gatlin? He said, oh, it was so good. That's not what Jesus said. He said, be a doer of the word. That's the man or the woman that's blessed in his or her deeds. Can you say amen? All right. Gospel of John. Chapter 14, let's begin at verse 10. Please make sure you have a pen, highlight or mark these verses, write them down, think about them. When the Spirit of God triggers the thought, he might trigger you to write a song. He might trigger you to write a book. Some of you are pastors. He'll trigger you with the message you've been praying for. Lord, give me a message. I need a word for my people on Sunday. God will trigger that thought as you receive the word. But it's the disciples that come to Jesus that actually get taught. It's those that come with an obedient ear, willing to hearken, listen, do what the Bible says to do. Glory to God. All right. Verse 10. Jesus is speaking. Believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the father that dwells in me, he does the work. So Jesus said, I'm the vessel. When you see me do something or say something, it's actually the father that's doing the works. In other words, Jesus is representing the father on earth. God is doing the representation in heaven. Can you see that? Verse 11. Believe me. That I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. The works themselves, the teaching, the anointed preaching, the healings, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, all the majestic and marvelous things that Jesus did. He said it's actually the Father who's doing them through me. Isn't that right? All right. Verse 12. Verily, verily. Now, if that weren't enough, he's getting ready to take us to another level. He says, truly, truly, in our language today, in the Western world, we would say, I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. That's what he's telling him. I'm telling you, he that believes on me, because what he's about to say to the natural finite mind seems impossible. Me? Do the works of Jesus? You mean I can teach and preach and heal and miracles and signs and one? No, 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 honey. It's not you. It's Jesus in you doing the work. Listen carefully. He that believes on me, the works that I do. What works did Jesus do? Somebody say this with me. It'll make, it'll make sense later. His name can do anything he can do. Don't forget that. His name can do anything that he can do. Example, you know, if the president of the United States, you know, wanted something done and he sent the ambassador to Europe and go over to Germany and tell them this, they're going in the name of the United States of America. President Joe Biden sent me. The country does it not because of the ambassador. They act because of the authority behind the name. In other words, the name United States of America, President Joe Biden or whoever. See, it does whatever that person can do, even if the person's not there. It's the authority and the power that's invested in the name. Can you get that? Now, we'll come back to that thought. Verse 12 again, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he'll do also and greater work. Now, that's why he said, verily, verily, boys, I'm telling you the truth. So help me, God. I know this is going to sound hard to believe because you've seen me stop storms. You've seen me raise the dead. My God, boys, you've seen me walk in water in the middle of a storm. You've seen me open the eyes of the blind. You saw me cause the dumb to talk, the lame to walk, the blind to see. You've seen those things. You've seen me take five loaves and two fish, bless them, and feed thousands. So I know it's hard to fathom 
that the works that I do, you'll do also and greater works than these. But let me give you a revelation. It's not you. It's the Jesus in you. The same way that God the Father did the works through Jesus, Jesus will do the works through you. You should write that down and meditate on that. Jesus working through you. Your lips are his lips. Your hands are his hands. Your feet are his feet. When you go to the jail, he goes to the jail. When you go to the hospital, he goes to the hospital. When you write the song, he's writing the song. When you sing, he's singing. He's using you. It's the Father that dwells in you that will do the works. Can you say amen to that? All right, let's go further. Verse 13, and whatsoever you shall ask the Father, underline these three words, please, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask, verse 14, anything, here we go again, underline these three words, please, in my name, I will do it. One more verse, you're in John. Flip over to chapter 16. We're talking about the name of Jesus. Verse 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. John 16, 23. Here he goes again. Verily, verily. Now you know what that means. Boys, I'm telling you the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth shall help me, God. I know this is going to be hard for you to believe what I'm about to say to you, boys. However, I say to you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. That's key. You should underline those three words. He will give it to you. What? Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Not John's name, Jim's name, Bishop so-and-so's name, mama's name, grandma's name. That's not what he said. He said, ask the father in my name. What name? The name of Jesus. He'll give it to you. Verse 24. Up until now, you've asked nothing. Here we go, folks. In my name. Underline it. Let that, let those, let that phrase resonate in your thinking let it ring in your ears lay your eyes on it handle it write it down look at it <laughs> think about it in my name what does that mean well I wrote it down somewhere in my name literally means representing all that I am it means in my authority or you're taking my place. It's the power of attorney. When you use my name, the father no longer sees you. He sees me. In other words, father in the name of Jesus. You're saying, father, I'm representing Jesus. Father, Jesus gave me the authority to ask you anything in his name. He said you would give it to me. Can you see that? Wow. In the name of Jesus. All right, let's go further. Up until now, or the King James says, hitherto, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now, these things have I spoken unto you, verse 25, in Proverbs. But the time comes when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. And that day you shall ask, there it goes again, in my name, you should underline that. You think Jesus is trying to tell us something? You think Jesus is trying to get something over to us? You think Jesus wants us to use his name? Does it sound like Jesus has given the church the power of attorney? Does it sound like Jesus wants us to represent him on the earth? He said, take my name. Ask anything in it. Ask the Father. If you ask anything, I'll do it. You ask the Father, he'll give it to you. Take my name and use it. And he said, verily, verily. Boys, I'm telling you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. If you'll take my name, take it to the Father in prayer. Take it in your everyday life and use it. It will work for you. 
the same way I represented the Father when I was on the earth and he did works through me, I'm going to do them through you. But make sure you take the name. Did you get that? All right, let's review quickly. The first six lessons we talked about the name of Jesus. The first thing we talked about was in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, where Jesus said, all power or the Greek word authority has been given unto me. Go you therefore or because of that. Now watch the delegated authority. In other words, Jesus took the authority that was given to him by God and delegated it to the body of Christ and then gave us what we call the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, right? And then we went to Mark 16 and we find out Jesus said, go into all the world, preach that gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Now listen carefully. These signs will follow them that believe in my name. That's John 16, beginning at verse 15. Verse 17, in my name. There goes that phrase again. It's in the name. So he told them that before the cross and he told them after he was raised from the dead. The name, the name. Don't forget to use the name. See, it's very, very important to remember the name and the authority in the name of Jesus. So the believer is authorized to take that name, to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether Jesus calls you to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, choir leader, banker, businesswoman, I don't, whatever he calls you to do. You do it in his name and you are authorized to use that name against the powers of darkness to set men and women free to pray for the sick. I mean, you have authority. What authority? All authority in heaven and in earth. Now, you're going to have to meditate on that. You're going to have to think about that because in the beginning, it's hard to fathom. Because your mind has to be renewed to the fact of who you are in Christ Jesus and what you have in Christ Jesus. And the same way Jesus told his disciples, look, I'm telling you the truth. See, because he knew this is going to be hard for them to get. He said, man, I'm talking to you in Proverbs. It's, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be like you're going to be scratching your head trying to figure this. Out. How in the world can I do the works of Jesus? You have to meditate on this. Pray about it. Think about it. One of the best prayers you can pray. Turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter one. This prayer itself will help you as you study, as you think about it, as you practice using the name of Jesus. Look at verse 16, chapter one, book of Ephesians. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So he's getting ready to give a apostolic spirit anointed prayer. You can pray this prayer over yourself in the place where he says you put your name there or say me. Let me give you an example. I'm going to teach by precept and example. Look at verse 17. I'll talk to God. God and father of my Lord Jesus Christ, father of glory. May you give unto me. Notice it says you, but remember, this is a prayer. Lord, may you give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you or in the knowledge of the name of Jesus. You can ask God that the eyes of my understanding would be enlightened. You're asking God to give you revelation about the name. Open up the eyes of my understanding. Help me to grasp it. Jesus said, Father, that I can use his name, that I can ask you anything in his name. He said, I can demand something in his name and he would do it. Grant me a revelation. You pray that prayer and you can do it every day until the revelation comes, till the insight comes, till you can see it clearly, till your faith is built up in that name. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened, that I may know the hope of your calling, that I may know 
the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, that I may know the exceeding greatness of your power towards me who believes the same power that you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. Lord, help me to understand that power. How do I operate in it? Give me revelation. Jesus said, I can use the name, ask you anything. You'd give it to me, right? Can you see that? That's one prayer. While you're there, flip over to chapter three. I encourage you to start using these today. Start using them as you're studying the name. Now, don't forget to go back and listen to part one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, there's a lot of information in there. Go get that information about the name of Jesus. Start acting on it. Mark the verses in your Bible. Think about it. Use the name of Jesus with those things on your mind and pray these prayers. Lord, give me understanding. Show me how to use it. Show me my authority. How do I use the name of Jesus to break the power of the devil over my children? Oh, God, how do I use that name to set captives free? How do I use that name effectively in prayer? Show me. Grant me revelation. Chapter 3, look at verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. There goes that name. So we're called by the name of Jesus. It's the family name. So I ask God, Lord, Grant me, now notice it says you in verse 16, but in my Bible, I put the word me. I put me in my. I'm talking to me. God's talking to me. I'm talking to the Father. Lord, grant me according to the riches of your glory to be strengthened with might by your spirit in my inner man so that Christ can dwell richly in my heart by faith so that I can be rooted and grounded in love and that I'm able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and that I may know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. Lord, that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. So you're praying scripture back to the Father. And you can end the prayer now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think. Now, don't forget what we said. Jesus told us, ask the Father in my name. And he said, Lord, I'm praying you're able to do exceeding abundantly above the, all that I ask or even think. Lord, get me to the place that I can think a thing and you'll do it. Now, that's good. Now, you know you're walking with God and you've developed yourself to the point where you can think it and God starts doing it. According to the power that works in me, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Can you see that? So take those two prayers. I showed you how to use them by example. I do them myself. I've been doing it this week, actually. Pray these prayers over yourself. Study these things out for yourself. Use the name of Jesus for yourself. Because Jesus said you have been delegated authority. You have scripture for it. You have Matthew 28, Mark 16, John 14, John 16. You can just start there. And realize I have been delegated authority from God Almighty himself. Now, let me close with this thought. We talked about how did Jesus receive the authority invested in his name? And if you haven't gotten those lessons, again, I remind you to go back and get them. The name of Jesus, part one through six. How did he get it? Well, we know that he got the name from that angel. Remember the angel gave the name, the name to his mother, Mary, and they called his name Jesus. The name Jesus in uh, the Old Testament is the name Joshua. You should have studied this out. The name Joshua in Hebrew literally means Yeshua. Most of you know, probably know that Yeshua. It literally means the Lord is salvation. 
And if you've been hanging around us long enough, you know that name salvation means healing, wholeness, soundness, preservation, deliverance, not just being born again and going to heaven. The name salvation means everything. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name. See, so when you say his name, Jesus, you said power, healing, wholeness, deliverance. <laughs> it's all in the name. And so you pray and you ask God to give you a revelation of that. Show me how the power works. Show me how to minister healing to the sick in your name. And then ask God to help you. Get yourself out the way because you always trust me. It happens. You'll be looking at your own inabilities, your own weaknesses, your own faults. You're going to figure out how in the world can I do that? Just remember what Jesus told the disciples. Verily, verily. I'm telling you the truth now. Use the name. <laughs> OK, now I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to come back and give you a second part of this message. Those of you that are watching uh, by YouTube or uh, All Nations TV, World Power Gospel Radio, you can just come back next week. But study these messages. Think about them. Uh, pastors, use them as an outline in your own messages. OK, it's OK. Just use it. It's not my stuff. I get it all from the Bible. Use it for the glory of God. Teach your church how to use the name. Teach your church how to pray in the name. Teach your church how to cast devils out in the name of Jesus. And if you haven't yet called on that name and made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is the accepted time. Today is the day for your salvation and your healing. It's a very simple gospel. Just believe that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that Jesus bore your sins in his own body on the cross, that he died and was buried. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead and accept Jesus as Lord, because he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Very simple prayer. Just say, Lord, I believe this gospel that was taught and preached today. I believe that Jesus bore my sins in his own body on the cross. I believe that he died and was buried. And I believe on the third day you raised him from the dead. And today I confess Jesus is my Lord. Glory to God. Now, there's some information at the bottom of the screen. You can contact the ministry. My email should be there, kingdomseekersradio at gmail. There's a text number there. If you text me, we will get back with you. We'll, we'll get back to that number. We'll call you. We'll do what we have to do to get back to you. But make sure you take advantage of the information at the bottom of the screen. If you have not yet got a copy of the book, The Success Flow, please go to the bottom of the screen. You go to Amazon.com, get a copy of the book, read it yourself, and then sew it. Give it to somebody else who doesn't know Jesus. It will change their life forever. Hey, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast on World Power Gospel Radio, All Nations TV, Donna Walton Television Network. Jesus is our healer.